Hi, this is Andrew Bunton, bass player for Toronto-based rock band Second Pass, and you're listening to realestatepodcastshow.com. Good morning, Paul and Rigo here, Toronto Real Estate Unfiltered, recording or hosted by the realestatepodcastshow.com, headquartered here in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Today's a really special one for me. I've been working on this. Um, actually, no, we have. There's a few other people involved. Uh, I, I don't do anything. Anything that comes out of my podcast, that's great. Uh, a, took a long time. And B, took a lot of people to make it happen. This is not a one-man show in that respect. Um, for me, I, I, I strongly believe, uh, and I live by this, is you help those who help others. There's people in your lives, and you'll know who they are if you think about them. There's people in your lives that will drop everything they're doing, stop in the middle of work, leave work, um, to to be with those uh, who need them, uh, and to and to do something uh, that again not the average person can do because these people, like myself, believe that if you have more than you need. If you have what you need, and even more than you need, then you need to help build longer tables. That could mean anything from actually putting food on tables, which is something I've been very um, focused on this year, and I have set a new goal for myself. I've, I've been able to provide 500 meals for the Daily Bread Food Bank this year alone, and this is only simply because of your support. Um, I, I've set a goal for uh, towards the latter half of the year uh, to reach 2000. So I am, am hoping for every on every purchase or sale that I help you guys with, and there's still a couple days left this year for us to reach this goal. Um, my goal is to reach 2000 meals. So each time any one of you calls me, helps you purchase or sell, sell a property, um, even just getting you signed on to do that. I'll even go as far as that. For me, um, you know, a handshake agreement is everything. Uh, if you're not working, and this is this is a very basic element of contracts. If you're not working with someone who's trustworthy, the contract doesn't mean shit. And that's the kind of people I work with is the ones who I can have a handshake agreement with, which is every single person that I've done interviews with on my podcast. Um, uh, understands that for me, everything is a handshake agreement. We support each other. Um, I believe, and again, lifting those and helping those who help others. There, there's really, um, you know, the, the life's too short. And if um, uh, any of you have ever lost someone that is, um, uh, that was a, was a role model, was, was, was like something to stand up, you know, something that sort of dr- drove you. And, and we've in our family have lost one of those people um, by far the, 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 the most outgoing and, and, and bravest person I, I think I've ever met uh, in my life. And, and it's, a, it's a really hard thing to do. But what those people would tell you to do is to use the pain and keep going, keep moving forward at all times and actually do good from it. So I, I, I am staying focused as much as it is hard to do. I'm staying focused on my goal of reaching the 2000 meals provided to the daily bread food bank by the end of the year. So what that means, if you, if you have not signed on with me yet to buy or sell now, there's only, again, there's less than 20 days, I think left in the year. Um, it's the ninth today. So there's, there's not that many days left. Uh, so you may or may not get around to completing the purchase or sale. I get it. It takes a little longer than that most times. However, if you are signed on with me, if you're committed to, to make a move with me, and this is just me in, you know, in, in the, in the, in the handshake agreement, of course, followed by the paperwork that goes with it. Um, but if you're committed to working with me in 2020, whether it's buying or selling or both, um, those will count as part of the goal. So if I do get you guys signed on now, uh, I will add that to my goal of, of, of saying if I, if I, if I help another, um, five people, for example, between now and the end of the month, that means 500 more meals. Uh, and if hopefully I help another 15 of you, that means 1500 more meals, which is what I need to reach my goal. So as you can easily tell, I need at least 15 of you, I would prefer 20. Because uh, sometimes uh, 
things happen and people don't end up moving. So to account for that, uh, and for me, you know, I want to do this in good faith and hopefully you do as well. Um, I, I would love for your help on this. But for now, I want to introduce you to an incredible man that was introduced to me by another incredible man. Um, a guy by the name of Andrew Buntain was kind enough to introduce me to a friend of his by the name of David Brown. David's the owner of Fearless Meat. He's invited me over today to have a meal, um, to talk with him, to learn about exactly what drives him, what mate, what, what makes him passionate about what he does, uh, and all the incredible good deeds that he does. You will not want to miss this episode. This is definitely one of the, I would say, um, if it's not going to be the most listened to episode on my podcast show, I'll be very surprised. Uh, the guy's incredible. The story is amazing uh, behind it. And having just tried the food, on believably good food and this is absolutely affordable food as well this is all where uh, for under twenty dollars you can go in and get a really good meal and i'm talking about make sure you get yourselves over there it's the the address is 884 kingston road which is in the kingston um the kingston road village area which is just north of the beach uh it's a fantastic neighborhood i love it there and the people who live there uh, usually say the same thing to me uh, as to one of the reasons why they either live there or want to move there. Uh, and that's really comes down to, for me, how everything ties into, of course, uh, real estate decisions and the businesses in those neighborhoods are the reason people move there, the reason people visit a new neighborhood, get to know the area, uh, not the boring open houses, because again, I, you know I don't do those. I do grand openings and I get businesses like David's business involved in all of my um, upcoming uh, grand openings in that area, so it's a, it's it's a win win. I get to support local businesses; they give back the, to the community the way they do. It's a fantastic um, situation. Uh, and lastly, the person responsible for putting this podcast together uh, on on this episode uh, is my ten year old son Adam. He actually was really helpful from the setting up of the podcast interview uh, to coming with to, with me to meet David and to actually doing the sound editing on the next on the interview that you're going to be hearing, uh, which was take, which, which took place, by the way, and this is one of the things I love about what I can do. It took place in a busy restaurant. It was actually really busy when we got there. Uh, it quieted down, but it was a little bit hard to get great sound. So my son was able to sort of do his magic that he knows how to do way better than I do uh, and make the thing, make the podcast sound as good as possible. Um, and uh, again, you just have to listen closely, which with any story, if you're at a kitchen, if you're, if you're at someone's kitchen, you're listening to a story. Um, you know, hopefully you'll be able to sit in a room and listen to it and you might, you might have to turn it up a bit, but it is worth it. Not just the podcast, but go in there, have a meal. Um, I, I had the double burger. Uh, it was unbelievable. The, 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 the beef was just absolutely perfection. Um, um, the fries were great. Uh, everything was great. And just the, the sort of, the um, the, uh, the layout of the, of the, of the, of the, you know, of the, of the business is just, it's a, it's a perfect environment. It's very intimate. Um, definitely again, make sure it's on your list of places to go. If you're deciding to go to, uh, you know, go have a, a bite for lunch, even today when you hear it, uh, or dinner or a place to bring your family. I'm bringing my wife there soon after she's heard all about how great it is. Uh, she wants to uh, go down and have one of our date nights there. And to me, that's a perfect, perfect way to, um, uh, to end the year. So, Enjoy the show. I know you're going to enjoy it. And if uh, you have any questions at all for me or for David or for Andrew or even for Adam, uh, there is links in the uh, podcast description for how to get in touch with uh, uh, pr pretty much everybody. So enjoy the show and have a great, great day. Hi, Gregor here, Toronto Real Estate Unfiltered and part of the Real Estate Podcast Show.com headquarters. Today, I actually get to be in a different place, and um, I, I don't always get to record off-site. Today, I get to, and it's a really, really, um, it's a privilege to be able to do this. I'm here with some really great guys. Uh, and the one I'm going to be introducing you to you first is Dave, who is the owner of Fearless Meat um, in, the, in the beach area of Toronto. And I want to have him tell you uh, a little bit about this place and uh, give you every reason to turn the car around. And I do mean that just like when you were driving on uh, vacations as a kid and uh, your father uh, threatened to turn the car around right now if you kept screaming. 
Uh, hopefully you'll hear enough from Dave about this place where you will turn the car around uh, and make sure that you stop here and perhaps uh, have your uh, next dinner or lunch here and uh, experience it for yourself. Uh, and I'll tell you more about my experience in the uh, second half of the show. So I'm going to, I want to introduce right now um, the owner of Fearless Me. Hi, Paul. Uh, thanks very much for uh, coming down here and for doing this podcast uh, with, uh, with me at uh, Fearless Meet. Uh, in January, uh, it's going to be two years that we've opened, and I can't believe how fast it's uh, how fast it's gone. It's been an incredible experience. It's great to meet all the, uh, the people in the neighborhood. Uh, we're getting probably about 2,000 people a week through the uh, doors and uh, it's a tiny place from the thousand square feet and, uh, and uh, there's times we just go all the way out and people who can't do it here. And, uh, that's really great for, uh, for me to see well, that. It, it was for me as I was coming today, I, was, I wasn't I was even sure I'd get in. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good first impression as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah, well, thank, thanks very much. Uh, so our name for this meet, uh, we're not afraid to offer uh, really great uh, meat and other food products at really reasonable prices. That's uh, our name for this meat and our pricing policy for those prices. And I try to offer the, uh, the best uh, quality and, and value and prices in our uh, product line in, uh, in Toronto. Uh, our slogan, Tender as a Butcher's Heart, uh, butchers have a, a long tradition of giving back to the, their uh, communities. And in the days before they, they had food banks, butchers were the local food banks. Really? Uh, helping uh, hungry and starving people. That's uh, amazing. Wow. Okay. And uh, it's a, I've been a butcher for 48 years. It's a tradition I've always taken very seriously. And I've done a lot of amazing charity events in the past. There's a lot more to come. And this restaurant is... Uh, it was me that's going to spirit all those uh, events going forward. Well, and that's the reason, Dave, that, uh, again, obviously I'm here because uh, I've heard about your place before, um, um, talking with Andrew about it, but once he connected me uh, to the person behind the, the company and the person behind Fearless Me, to me it's a story that I really wanted to um, be able to share. And hopefully those of you listening are, are the kind of people that do appreciate the stories behind whatever it is that I'm talking about. I, I talk equally about the stories behind real estate as much as the stories behind music that I love, uh, the stories behind architecture in our city. Uh, a lot of you guys who are listening love the celebrity stories about places in our city. But uh, what I wanted to find out from you, Dave, is as, uh, as much as you can tell us, um, is about how the uh, the program that uh, that you have that works for the uh, for, for helping to feed the veterans and, and, and how that works and, um, uh, and and where you came up with the uh, I guess where the uh, with the idea of, of doing something to give back besides what you just said, which is something that butchers have always done, which is I did not know. Um, so how does uh, how did that program come to come to be? Uh, helping veterans is something that's always been special for me. Uh, my uh, uncle was uh, a Second World War veteran, uh, but I think the uh, well, I think the veterans have done so much for us, and uh, it's the least that uh, I personally can do uh, for them uh, to make them feel appreciated. Uh, all year round, we have uh, free coffee and ice cream for uh, veterans, and we also do it for their spouses as well. And if the veteran is no longer with us. Uh, Spouse is more than welcome. Wow. Uh, during really the uh, Remembrance Day uh, week, that yep. whole week, we have uh, free uh, free burgers and coffee and, uh, and ice cream for veterans and their uh, and their spouses. Uh, uh, I wish there was more that we could do if we could do for them. And you know, we're just a small restaurant, but uh, by doing this. I'm hoping they'll be an inspiration to uh, all the restaurants in Toronto and ultimately across Canada to uh, do their part to uh, take really good care of our veterans. Again, I, I think basically everything, uh, anything that's considered a movement, I believe, starts with someone that has the passion for something. And of course, um, to me, this is it's such an important cause as far as like uh, doing anything 
to 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 help the you know those who have uh, you know fought to protect our country. To me, that's such an important thing. Uh, and the fact that you're doing you know anything at all, and you're doing again the Remembrance Day, uh, which I was going to try to get in uh, for that, and it was unfortunately uh, not easy for. <laughs> Uh, us to arrange but um, so basically for the Remembrance Day aspect you mentioned and then of course from the uh, on a day-to-day -day basis you're saying that uh, veterans can come in and have a free coffee is uh, free coffee ice cream have a free they coffee and some ice cream they don't have to buy anything and just obviously just you know your way of saying thank you and to me um, those who give back and those who pay it forward when they have the opportunity to do so, and it, and it doesn't matter because I, I try to do the same. Uh, I know our friend Andrew here is the same exact way about uh, doing, you know, living that kind of life and, and, and paying it forward. And for me, uh, it sets a good example because my son's actually here today as well. And uh, uh, the one thing I've learned as a parent, and maybe, you know, you can attest to this as well, uh, it doesn't matter what you tell them. It's, it's really what you do. Like your example, the way you live your life is what they'll actually see. You can tell them, don't do this, do that, don't do this. And those words will go right out the window uh, with, with whatever yesterday's technology is. Uh, and, and he'll agree to it, I know. Uh, so basically, again, hopefully setting a good example uh, is, is what you're doing, and, I, and it definitely is what you're doing. Um, so I guess the, the other question I wanted to know is... Um, Oh yes, yeah. We're, we're and this is this is the beauty of this um, uh, the podcast for me. It's a storytelling medium. Uh, and as I came in, I looked up after ordering and, and, and the food that I ordered. I'm going to do a separate podcast just about that after I'm done with these guys because uh, I don't think I have all the words ready yet. It's incredible. Is all I have to say. Uh, I have a new favorite burger place with with which, which my friend Andrew will attest is uh, a big deal because I'm very specific about uh, where I get my burgers. But um, I look up at the cash and I see a picture of Dave with Julia Child, and I said I have to tell that story if you don't mind. And he said. Uh, sure, so this is my first time hearing it, and uh, maybe yours as well. Uh, well, let's go back to uh, 1993. Uh, Julia, uh, uh, I have an international reputation for barbecuing, and Julia heard about me and invited me down to a vineyard in Rhode Island to uh, barbecue for her and uh, 200 of her closest friends. So this was uh, September of uh, 1993. They uh, put me up at the uh, guest house at the Cigar Vineyard, probably about a 15,000 square foot building. I had the entire building to myself. Oh wow! And a okay. uh, uh, commercial kitchen, about 2,000 square feet, like twice the size of our entire restaurant. And uh, I had a lot. Uh, uh, it was all my own recipes and uh, a lot of the, uh, the meats I had brought in from Canada and uh, some of it I sourced locally. And uh, the day of the uh, bar barbecue, they got me 28 student chefs from Johnson Wales University to uh, be my assistants. And these uh, kids showed up in the morning with their chef's lights and, uh, and the uh, attitude uh, were from Johnson Wales and this prestigious uh, culinary college in the United States. You're some uh, butcher from Canada. Who yeah. Can possibly show us. Yeah, yeah. So it's a case of uh, think fast. Eh? Yeah. Okay. So I uh, pulled out a 50 pound piece of shark, put it up on the uh, cutting block, and said, "We need this cut up at the steaks. Which one of you guys wants to do it?" And nobody moved. And <laughs> I turned to biggest mouthpiece and said, "How about you, sir?" And yeah. He didn't move either. Okay. Let me show you how to do it. And within more than hundred three minutes. Uh, I had this nice deep piles of steaks on the uh, cutting block, and these guys were my best friends afterwards. Wow. Wow. And uh, Julia is just an absolutely uh, amazing person to, uh, uh, to work with, to be around. Uh, she's too bad she's no longer with us, but she's a, a culinary icon, and, uh, and she also uh, called me the uh, Butcher of Canada. Wow. That's really? Really amazing. What a great story. What's interesting, uh, Paul, it's Andrew, is we look around the establishment, um, I see article after article and column after column that Dave has penned for the Toronto Star and many other journals here in, in Toronto. And I think what impressed me after meeting Dave earlier this year was just the sheer skill and expertise that he brings to barbecuing, to carving turkeys, to knife sharpening, to seasoning, uh, every aspect of, of preparing meat. 
of a variety of different meats is 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 within this gentleman's realm, and you can just learn so much. Yeah, and it's nice that Adam, your your son Adam, is here today because I think more kids should learn how to properly carve a turkey and how to properly grill meat and. And I think uh, the world needs more people like Dave who have that kind of expertise. Uh, you know, share. yeah, you bring up that point, which again, I only know because you told me about it. You, of course, uh, you, you, you've taken his course and some other people have taken the same course. So um, I'm wondering, Dave, if you can explain how this, um, I'm not sure if it's called, uh, turkey carving, whatever, whatever the course is, it sounds amazing, uh, and I know there's going to be a lot of turkey carving coming up. So uh, maybe if you can explain a little bit about that uh, and how it works, and uh, how people can, if they wanted to sign up for it, how could they? Sure. Uh, uh, well, I have a wealth of uh, meat and butchering expertise. I just want to share with people. I, as I mentioned earlier, I've been uh, butchering for 48 years, and. Uh, so as many young people going into it uh, now as there used to be, and uh, and it's changed from uh, back in the days when I learned where you take that wall hanger from a beef and have to cut it up every which way. Uh, now it's more like a, a factory operation, and just not, it's not quite the same anymore. And people, uh, most people uh, don't understand me the way they should. So every piece of meat tells me a uh, story, and. Uh, there's all kinds of cutting techniques and cooking techniques and that I want to share with people. Okay, uh, right. So I started this thing at our, our, our Fearless Meat, call it Fearless Meat Academy, and uh, it's a combination of uh, videos that are on our website, uh, and uh, they're all like about uh, two minute videos, uh, and each one of them tells a story, whether it's uh, safety with uh, with knives or uh, preventing uh, you know, illness with bacteria. Uh, from back bacteria or uh, and, but they're all fun videos and they're all about two minutes and they're on our website under uh, Fearless Meat Academy our website is uh, www.fearlessmeat1.com and then I also uh, do uh, uh, courses in the front of the restaurant okay. so uh, when you come into our restaurant and, and in the front we've got a little butcher bar and it looks like it's brand new and mm -hmm. it's in amazing condition, but it's probably about 100 years old wow. and okay. uh, weighs maybe 1,200 pounds. <laughs> and it's very rare to get something in that kind of condition. Good Lord, yeah. Uh, but it's front row center when you uh, come in. And uh, every so often I'll teach uh, uh, hands on uh, classes. There. So I've done uh, ones for turkey carving, vegetable carving, knife sharpening, and these are all free. And they're designed to be uh, short, quick, simple, easy to uh, understand. And you don't need a reservation when we have them. Uh, you can uh, uh, we publicize it on, on our Facebook page and on uh, Beach Metro News when we're uh, when we're having these. And, uh, and and this podcast, as of now, as far as I'm concerned, because I'll probably be at one of these uh, <laughs> upcoming classes because they sound amazing. Yeah. So we're planning to. Uh, do a knife sharpening and another turkey carving will be for Christmas. I have finalized the exact date. We'll get people, uh, people ready for, for Christmas. And if you don't, if you're shown the right way, uh, like I can show people in two minutes how to uh, be an expert at carving a turkey. And hmm. with this here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I attended the turkey carving and uh, I, was a, I was a hit. Yeah, My family at the turkey carving. It's one of those things that um, once you're shown how to do it properly, it becomes fairly intuitive, and it's something that everybody should learn. I'm 47 years old. Nobody ever showed me how to properly carve a turkey before, and uh, and Dave did. So that's something I'm going to keep with me every time there's a family meal, substance to Christmas, to Thanksgiving, birthdays, anything. Absolutely, I, I think it's something that it's it is such a big part of uh, you know the. The, the holidays, Thanksgiving and, and Christmas, and, and, and I know even in our family, um, there's always been uh, at, at the grandparents' house, uh, you know, the, the big meal that's prepared, either it's a ham or a turkey or whatever it is, but just the, mm -hmm. having that extra knowledge, I think is a, um, it's just, it's again, like you said, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very age old tradition. It's something that you've been doing for almost half a century. Sorry if I put it that way. You, 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 you say the numbers, I'm saying almost half a century. I think it's a bit more impactful. Um, but the fact that you know what you're doing and you're willing to share that with people um, is, is one of those many things. And Andrew's heard me talk about this. There's many things that they don't 
talk about or even give options to kids in school about. And you know, one of those for me that's a bit of a sticking point is they don't discuss the trades. Um, and they, I, I don't think I ever remember being talked about, uh, you know, maybe you should, uh, you know, you like it. And I grew up in an Italian house, so it was food everywhere. We were, we were cooking all the time. I learned how to cook, but I was never told, you know, this could be possibly a, a, a career or, or a, you know, a direction you want to go if you really like it. And I actually do, to this day, really like it. For me, it's like just something that sort of uh, gets me away from other things and, and sort of has my uh, attention when I do it. So uh, I, I think it's fantastic that you're doing this, Dave. Um, and I, uh, I think hopefully the people who are listening that have uh, an interest in this will uh, see the link on the podcast and, and get in touch with you. And of course, there will be, as, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, more of these episodes, probably some uh, some live turkey carving podcast. I don't know if that's ever been said uh, on a podcast. <laughs> we're, 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 we're not, not going to have any live turkey. Not, not, not <laughs> live. Not, 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 Dave, you're correct. I think apostrophes are important. Uh, so a, a, a live TV. podcast of a turkey carving, not a live turkey carving. I think that's uh, something I, I don't want to become famous for. Other, yeah, otherwise I'll, I'll, I'll have that the, uh, the, the, the the Ozzy Osbourne fame of uh, uh, eating a, eating a, eating a plastic bat uh, and ended up being a real one. So no, I think uh, definitely the um, the emphasis will be on again Dave's amazing training and of course uh, you know helping everybody who's listening to learn a bit more. So um, yeah, any uh, any final words? Anything you want to add, Dave? Before we uh, wrap it up for today. Uh, just want to thank you very much for coming down and for taking the time to interview me and to see what Curtis Meat is all about. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate it so much, and I, I know I'm going to be back, and I want to thank Andrew, by the way, for being the one to set up this meeting, because for me, there are people in life that you meet that you never know you know, where things are going to go with, but Andrew's just one of those guys uh, who's been, again, such a great friend, but on top of that, just like, hey, you, you need to meet this guy, or you should, uh, you know, and we talk about music all the time, so that's the other thing, hey, you should listen to this band, you should go see this show, and, and this is one of those really great moments that, again, I couldn't thank you enough, so thank you, Andrew. But by the way, uh, your second uh, appearance on the podcast. Uh, clearly not the last time. I think uh, I think you're going to be the uh, guest host eventually, uh, if, if that ever happens. So thank you guys for all tuning in. Thanks very much. Yeah. And, yeah, thank, and, and yeah. thank you. Thank all of you guys for uh, um, uh, setting this up today. Thank you to the staff for uh, being so incredibly kind and patient. And again, it was uh, a pretty busy um, at noon. Uh, today, anyways, with the with the crowd, but it definitely got to be uh, um, quiet enough. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the food the food was incredible. Again, you're going to hear that part on the next segment of the podcast that I will do from home as I'm digesting. So thanks again for tuning in, and uh, have yourselves a great day. Fifteen minutes, perfect.